Chapter 18 They decided to hook up later. He was going to stay with her, after all. He stepped on her fire escape, saw the forest for the trees of black iron, the dog of deprivation chained on the other side of the link, eyes expressionless. He made it down and walked from the building, then shuffled forward slowly and put his empty fist down on a parked car. Frustration in his face and the reflection of the glass. The sky was quiet and attentive. The car was an old Mustang like the car his grandmother once drove. Her two Goldens cramped but obedient in the back seat. He turned and fell back against it. Stared over the lot and the lowered head of the rot to the dirty house towering in the dirty city sky and the black iron skeleton he would climb again. He wished he could hotwire and drive home in the creaking music of beat shocks over torn asphalt to his apartment where there was water to boil over fire, a wall for his back, floor for his ass, paper for his hands, home where life was simpler. That evening, found himself at Cass's, in her bed, breathing hard, her body up against his half covered by the sheet with smiling yellow suns on it. Couldn't help himself, Will. Had to get Bella's advances out of his system. Cass's tears dropped on his chest and she called him selfish again for not taking her to orgasm. In the past, he worked harder for her, got liquored for endurance but the guilt trip was hollow today. You're the one who's selfish, he said, got out of bed. Such a rush to desert me? There was serenity in her voice. She sat up and lit a cigarette. A cross hung between her legs. No, he said, I was at my friend's house earlier and I left without them and had to go back for them. What friend was this? No friend of yours. Not that bitch. Mind your own business, Cass. That child, your princess in her high tower. She sucked too hard in her cigarette and started coughing. Will put his pants on, then went and opened her fridge for a beer in the yellow light. Coffee table strewn with club invitations neglected ashtrays, and stained unwritten letters, matchbooks and postcards from her older sister, the dancer, in Europe. And guarded by red velvet, she stole from the back room of the bar where she used to work and where they first met. The bar whose owner came before he had her, or his clothes, off, according to the rumors she spread with her velvet red lips and who fired her and outlawed her from the bar forever, was too cluttered for his legs. He pushed aside a tray of pills, business cards of photographers, and the July copy of Mademoiselle to put his feet up. She smoked patiently in bed. Who's your baby, she asked. You tell me. Say it like you said it, she leaned forward on her knees in bed. Will you? What, when I meant it, he asked. Say it, she begged, knocking her knees, doing space invaders with her feet.